Hello, my name is Luke Gomerman, and I'm a park ranger here at Big Cypress National Preserve. I'm standing in the middle of a freshwater marl prairie because I'd like to introduce to you one of the most amazing assemblages of organisms that I know. Why don't you go ahead and try to take a look? Uh, looks like a bunch of grass to me. No, no, no. You don't look across the prairies to find this beautiful batch of beings. You look down at your feet. Oh. Don't you uh, see it? I it's... still don't see it. Oh, well, I can tell you're having a hard time. Why don't we get down to ground level and take a closer look? Allow me to introduce you to Periphyton. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it looks like a bunch of soggy bread to me. <laughs> well, sort of. Deriving from the Greek word elements, peri, meaning around, and phyton, meaning plant, periphyton does appear to be growing all across these freshwater marl prairies. From clinging to the sides of grasses, sedges, and rushes, to growing on the surface of the soil and rocks, to floating on the top of the water. But if it's not soggy bread, then what is it? Excellent question. As it turns out, periphyton is not even a plant. Instead, it's an entire community, a collection of organisms all living together. In my hand, I am holding blue-green algae, which gives periphyton this greenish color, fungi, microorganisms and bacteria, decaying plant materials, and even tiny organisms, and maybe even their eggs. This community all lives together and creates the foundation for the entire freshwater marl prairie ecosystem. But wait a second, Ranger Luke. Doesn't a foundation need to be sturdy and strong? Oh, another fantastic question. And yes, if you're building a foundation for a road or a house, you do need a strong, sturdy foundation. But if you're building the foundation for a food web, all you need is an organism that can conduct photosynthesis. And in periphyton, our blue-green algae conducts photosynthesis. We call the blue-green algae in periphyton a primary producer because it is the first organism that is collecting energy from the sun and makes it available to all the other organisms in the entire food web. From the first thing that eats periphyton, such as a small snail, all the way up to the top of the food chain, perhaps here in the freshwater mall prairie, a red-shouldered hawk. In the middle of the day, you might find periphyton floating on the surface of the water, just like me. How does it accomplish this feat? Well, the answer again lies in periphyton's ability to conduct photosynthesis. When the blue-green algae in periphyton conducts photosynthesis, it creates oxygen, which is a gas. And just like the gas in my inner tube, that oxygen gas allows periphyton to float on the surface of the water. Now, the oxygen produced by periphyton also is an important regulator for water quality. That oxygen is dissolved into the water column and is essential for the survival of animals like fish who have gills. Those fish need to breathe dissolved oxygen in the water column. If you remove periphyton from this ecosystem, that dissolved oxygen source may disappear and those animals might suffocate. Periphyton! 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 But that's not all. Where do you think all of the soil that these grasses, sedges, rushes, and even trees are rooted in? Where does that soil come from? Uh, I'm gonna go with periphyton. Exactly! When periphyton conducts photosynthesis, not only does it produce oxygen, but it is also consuming acid from the water column. Because the bedrock of Florida is underlain in limestone, which dissolves in acid, when periphyton removes acid from the water column, it turns that limestone back into a solid. Now in the dry season, when that coating dries up, it turns into a crust that breaks down and eventually becomes the marl soils of the prairies. In addition, periphyton is an important home for many small organisms living in the prairie. This is because periphyton is a reservoir of moisture 
During the dry season, which lasts about six months in the prairie, paraffin absorbs moisture just like a sponge. This allows tiny creatures like snails or frogs or maybe even frog eggs to survive the dry periods here in the prairie. While it may not appear significant at first glance, it's amazing to consider the many roles that paraphyton plays here in the freshwater marl prairies. The foundations of a food chain, regulators of water quality, creators of soil, builders of homes, even reservoirs of water. You might begin to wonder what paraphyton cannot do. So the next time you take a venture out into Big Cypress National Preserve and walk across the freshwater marl prairies, Make sure you notice the paraffin and consider what our areas would look like if paraffin were not here. Thank you. Perry Fighting! Woo!